Welcome back to the LCS Countdown. Well, we're narrowing in on game one here, day two of the first week of the summer split. As I mentioned earlier, every 1-0 team faces a team that lost yesterday with Clutch looking to take a win off of Cloud9. Fly looking to do the same opposite Golden Guardians in game two. And of course, TSM aiming to keep the streak alive versus CLG. Now with the Academy Showcase after the cool down tonight, featuring TSM Academy and Team Liquid Academy. Well, we're already playing to the underdog narrative with every single match being 1-0 versus 0-1. <laughs> yep, without a doubt, without a doubt. But I'm hoping for a competitive split, so maybe we'll see things kind of shake up a bit today. Now, going into the summer split opener, Cloud9 came out swinging versus FlyQuest and proved themselves to be that terrifying top three team from last split. Yeah, Sneaky and Zazel crushed their laning phase, which is something you know people kind of meme him for, but there are a number of times that he does step up, especially uh, against or with Lucian picks often, and I think that's what people were excited to see, the fact that Licorice looked good, Niski looked good, and their Bali looked good. Everything was jamming. Dude, Niski's just, it's a B-roll of him just laughing and having a good time. I Who mean, wouldn't that, after that game? That, I mean, yeah. that's what that team is known for, right? Always have smiles on their faces and having a good time playing. Yeah, and their draft was awesome. I love what Reaper did, because I know at the, towards the end of the split, he was picking Orn for Licorice, and now he's back on the Aatrox, back on the carries. This is what I like of Cloud9. And it wasn't easy, which I think is what people are kind of excited to see. It was another one of those kind of comeback games after a bad dragon fight. They stay aggressive and they find some more. And so the fact that C9 is always looking for their opportunities is what people really like about this team. On the other hand, Clutch certainly tried to cook up the same level of aggression, but had trouble executing versus Optic yesterday. Yeah, they gave it a shot and they tried playing a composition that is, is old, it's old and tested, it's the rumble and the jace. The downside is that it's really difficult to execute. And so the team, they have Cody Sun in as well, and they're still trying to figure out what style works best for them. I think that what the doctor is ordering is a little bit easier execution, but overall, I think they have the right idea because at least they're trying things, right? It's week one, you might as well keep experimenting, see what works, and you have a few weeks to adapt. It was nice to see Cody back in, though. I thought he had a decent game, all things considered, and, you know, the big difference between Piglet and Cody is you get these games from Cody where he's not the main focal point. We're talking about Rumble ults, we're talking about Jason Lee Sin, and we're not talking about the bot lane, whereas when Piglet's in, it's either he's slamming or he's, he's dying all the time. So to those easier executing comps like you're asking for, Cody's the guy that they can kind of lean on in the bot lane. Right, the picks themselves made sense for the players that make up yeah. the roster of Clutch Gaming, but the win did not follow, and so perhaps an easier execution will be what they need. But earlier, Coach McScrag gave us some insight on what Cody Sun brings to this Clutch Gaming squad. Yeah, well, Cody brings, uh, you know, he brings a lot of stability. He brings a lot of, uh, like, teamsmanship, something that we're really trying to focus on this split. Uh, you know, he's all about building friendship and relationship with his teammates. And uh, that's something that we really need and that we were really lacking last split. Yeah, I think we match up against C9 pretty well. Like, again, both times we played them last split, we were sort of in sort of the, the trough of that, like, crisis of identity. Um, so, like, our drafts were a little weird for us, and uh, we sort of played right into their style. But I think this time, like, you know, we're going to catch them off guard and, and sort of put them on the back foot. And uh, as long as we play our game the way we do in practice, uh, without like um, you know getting too fearful or playing too reserved on stage, which is kind of what happened yesterday, then uh, I think we'll be fine. I think we have a good chance. Thoughts there? I mean, kind of similar to what we were saying. Kobe, uh, excuse me, Cody brings a lot of stability to the bot lane. Uh, Kobe hopefully. does too, though. I, mean, I don't like Kobe in the bot lane. Yeah, Keep him in the jungle. that's true. Keep him away from the bot lane. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you know, some some seems like stage nerves as well. First game back for him uh, and the team as a whole. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully they s settle in a little bit more. All right. Well, with that, I want to get your predictions for the day as we've got three minutes till that first one kicks off. And there we have Ooh, it. Much standard. like yesterday, there's only one disagreement. Statsbot, though, jumping in as well to weigh in on it. That Golden Guardians FlyQuest game is the only one in which you guys differ. And so with only one difference in the predictions, it seems like the perfect time to bring back the weekly wager for Ow. this summer split. And it will be that <laughs> second game. Joel, please tell them what they're playing for. All right, so the winner gets to be a PA for a day. I'll take you under my wing and make you do all the stuff I don't like to do anymore. Mm -hmm. That sounds <laughs> awesome. What stuff? Wait a minute. That sounds awesome. Hold on. Can and uh, to clarify, when he says the winner 
Yeah. Yeah. He Not really basketball. means the the loser. Okay. The loser wins a day. Who gets but, wrong. But what yeah, is yeah, what yeah, is something yeah. a PA would do that you don't like that one of us would be forced? Is there like something in particular? You're trying, that you're trying to ask him to give away trade secrets. I'm right just now? trying to figure out what we're getting. What are we getting he's into? Nervous. No, he's nervous. Don't be Mark, nervous, Mark. He's just already let it wash over you. Thank you very much, Dwell. Appreciate that as always. I'm sure you guys will be in good hands. Whichever one of you loses out on this, let's discuss that game too, though. Crumbs, you went for Golden Guardians, whereas Mark Z, you're looking for the bounce back. On FlyQuest. Well, Statsbot, first of all, there, he's in Statsbot. He he's did agree with you. one place uh -huh. agreed with me. Went so four and one go. yesterday for anyone was, you know, one and one. no one cares. Golden <laughs> Guardians won the game. They look great, right? Yeah. They, they're 1 0. Yes. FlyQuest lost. Facts. Facts. To yesterday uh -huh. against Cloud9 did not look too good. Okay. I didn't. Hey, all right. FlyQuest looked fine. Okay. Viper. Okay. Yeah, Viper <laughs> still killed, but. I didn't like the Vi pick. I did not like the Vi pick, and that's my problem. Yeah, but oh. they're not gonna like instantly pick Vi again today. Yeah, they, they can have a better jungle pick. It was close versus C9, one of the best teams in the league last year okay. or last split. Yeah, and they could have won that game with a little bit better execution. It was it was very close back and forth. It's gonna be a contentious one. Okay. Mark yeah, your right. calendars. That's game two of the day, but it's time for our first one. So we're gonna toss it out to Freak for the call. Thank you very much, Dash. Welcome to the Battle Arena. I am Freak. To my right is Kobe, and Clutch Gaming and Cloud9 are going to do battle in about 40 seconds. Fair enough, Freak. I really like the arguments there on the analyst desk. Wish we could get a little bit more uh, uh -huh. confrontation before they send it over to us. Where are you sitting on the vibe? They, they did. Um, well, I mean, we'll get into that in the next game because it's not really relevant. Yeah, it's this valid. One. But uh, Cloud9 coming off their victory yesterday, I thought looked uh, very similar to how we saw them last split. Um, yeah. Just continually looking for those opportunities in those mid-game team fights. And as soon as they found the critical one, pushing ahead through the objectives and finishing the game fairly quickly. And meanwhile, the Clutch Gaming side, it was a pretty weak spring split for the squad. Big spots in the Cody side would help them build some rockers in. They were needing something they were missing from the previous split. And I thought individually, Cody was completely fine as a player. And Clutch will see if they can step up now today against an undefeated team and a top echelon squad here in the LCS. Yumi banned away, Aurelia dropped at the table. I'm always a little sad seeing blue team banning champs like Yumi. I feel like they are first pick worthy, and thus uh, <laughs> you kind of want to force on the opposing yeah. team. But uh, something else in the eyes of Clutch for first pick here. Very, very, very fast uh, bans also coming through as well. The fact that the Clutch are pretty much doing it instantly. I think they may have predicted some of what C9 was trying to do, but uh, Rumble, Jace, and one final ban going to be Rise from the C9 side, and now Clutch. What were you looking to first pick? Ah, uh, Silas is up, but keep in mind, so is Akali. Some other important picks out there as well. All right, Silas definitely super versatile. Oh. We've seen it in all the way. Oh. Sona Tarek has been left open, and they actually are allowing Clutch uh, kind of the the dare, you know, to break yep. it, If you, but then you're kind of stuck with Sona without a... Yeah, uh, you're playing Sona against a Tarek who can all in you. A strong lane partner. Yeah, so Zyrakon down for the bottle lane. Very, very fast draft. Silas, not much of a surprise. And there is a Sona Tarek bottom lane versus Zyrakon. That's already exciting. The Silas and Akali trading hands. And we're like 12 seconds in on the second band. <laughs> yep, already trying to catch up here. I think the Akali is actually a super interesting matchup with Silas, too. Um, yeah. We've seen it go so many different ways. And there are a lot of different changes you can make within the matchup as far as the Conqueror and the build that you go. Uh, Silas definitely has his windows, but they're later in the game versus Akali. All right, well, that's going to be exciting to see, even if they do match up directly one-on-one. -on -one. And we'll see where they all go. We feel like any of those players can play those champions. Hecarim, Nico, Kennen all banned away. One final ban for Clutch Gaming. What do C9 want? Of course, there's still a soul in it, a grab for either side, and the jungler here as well, as it's been one jungle ban and two top lane bans on the C9 side. Oh, can't do as well being followed up here. Interesting because, like, the Hecarim makes so much sense with the Sona Tarek, the super hard engaged damage jungler. Um, Kindred also can uh, make a lot of sense with this team fight composition, but it's in a much different way. It's not your hard engaged, so you have to get that from somewhere else. Um, and they're just kind of taking off another one of those high damage junglers yep. uh, that has another ultimate that can save the Sona. 
Also, uh, Kindred versus Rek'Sai tended to be a bit Kindred favorite, if I understand correctly, which means that it kind of opens up the Rek'Sai pick pretty easily, baits him into it, so Lee Sin grabbed right away. And a Pike coming in as well, and that is a... Either it's a Funnel Strat or it's a solo lane Pike right now. So, uh, getting their inspiration from Wonder over in G2, because Zyrakon's bottom lane, and that's Pike top blind. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's go. I mean, it's flexible. You can play at mid as well. It That's true. It doesn't top lane. Uh, yeah. Pike was a premier mid laner uh, for quite a long stretch in solo queue, but I definitely expect it to go in the hands of Hooney. And now we get Camille top lane with the Rexa coming through as well, so very exciting. We are seeing some different looks out of these teams. Solo lane Pike, that is exciting. Camille back outside the jungle, also pretty cool, so I'm very hyped about this one. So Camille actually is a really Interesting last pick to me, the ultimate, the Hexec ultimatum from Camille is so good at actually getting the kills onto Pike. The hardest thing with Pike is locking him down. He's so slippery, has all this disengage, can uh, get into the deep waters and go invisible, but Camille is one of those champions that is so good at all inning Pike. This top lane is going to be a battle. Huni and Licorice, this was one of our premier top lane matchups. Yeah. And they are going to go take it to 11. This is exciting because, yeah, Huni again, essentially blinded the pike. It was indeed uh, Licorice getting last pick for top and it says, okay, you're playing top pike probably. Camila's my matchup. This is spicy, absolutely. And both of them have junglers that can make early passes there. Rek'Sai definitely has the advantage in straight up 1v1 dueling with Lee Sin, uh, but it is going to be about how they coordinate and track the enemy junglers to get those timings off. This is going to be all kinds of fun to watch for here. It is going to be an electrocute for the Silas, the Conqueror for the Akal, looking at runes as we load ourselves into this one. The second game of this new Clutch Gaming roster with Cody Sun down in the bottom lane. They have Titans ahead of them, though, in Cloud9. And now we've got C9 themselves hoping to keep that winning streak going. Over for 2-0. Start off the LCS Summer Split. Ping's already going down in the C9 jungle here. Looks like Clutch might go for an invade. Let's see, it looks like a top side. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Well, of course, Pike can be very good level one. That Q can be pretty nuts. So can E Flash. And there's maybe just enough follow up with a Rakan. Lee Sin showing on the ward that they expect to be there. But the rest of Clutch Gaming will catch Licorice unawares. All right, Licorice gets spotted right now. Nice E over the wall. Is it going to be enough set up? They try with Rakan, but no. Licorice able to learn the hook shot in time to get away from the knockup, and he will walk away. No summoner's burn, a little bit of damage dealt. But now it means that jungle control goes to Clutch Gaming side. They put a ward on the red buff. Well, you always should be responding on the opposite side of the invade. As soon as you see that, you can see the movements here from C9. You react instantly, go in and get counter wards on the enemy jungle. So both sides do have those deep wards on the red buffs. But I do really like this level one. It shows that it's in preparation. They know where Licorice likes to sit at level one. They even had Lyra show on a ward that they know C9 puts down. I love that kind of level one preparation. It sadly doesn't mean a whole lot other than forcing your opponent to learn Hookshot, which is probably not the ideal level one for lane, but they get that anyway. And now we have the sort of battle starting with a blue buff steal for Clutch's side. Very aggressive look here from Clutch Gaming, going for the invade, taking away this blue. Looks like some uh, question mark pings. They're trying to split the map here. Uh, give up their own blue to the Rek side. Lyra's going to continue to farm out this side. Ooh, and a knockout very early on. Stun's not even going to land on the support, so really good autos coming in towards Sneaky at half HP already. Cody, Sun, and Vulcan ready to take it to C9. That's the thing you have to watch out for, always, as the Sonoteric lane, is the all-ins early on. Zyrakhan definitely extremely potent, and they're using that to their advantage so far. As soon as Lyra shows on this ward on the red buff, that will alert Sven Skaren, um, that he has gone from his own side. Pass over his own ward here and just continue clearing through the tickets. And so right now, pretty much perfect information for both these sides. Uh, oh, as we watch the top side fight, not going to be more damage coming in here, but uh, Clutch knows that Sven went red to Krugs now on the Raptors and uh, counting the camps that Lyra had as well. It's pretty easy to surmise that that was blue Gromp onto that red buff. So, and now as they run through the fog of war, we finally have some guessing games again for the jungle sides. Lyra taking actually a, a lot of farm here, doing the Raptors as well, and not going for his own blue buff, though uh, Svenskeren could have gone there through Fog of War, I believe. Uh, oh no, that is a ward in the river put down by Demonte, so that would have been known if it happened. Instead, he'll kill a trinket but have nothing 
for almost nothing to take away. Yeah, he's going to lose out on an entire quadrant here. Lyra comes back to fight him rather than going for the reverse clear, though. Scuttle Crab's about to spawn, and, and that is going to be the first objective. And level three for both junglers, and right now mid being pushed out by Demonte means it's pretty easy to own the bottom river. You can see Cody's son and Vulcan doing the same, so there is exactly only one camp that Svenskaren can take. He is out of jungle camps once the wolves are dead. Yeah, we should see Lyra just cross straight across mid lane and grab the other scuttle crab, considering his mid lane is also pushed up. Uh, Svenskaren's going for it right now, though, and it looks like the desync top lane is going to be the bigger tell. Licorice is moving over to Ooh. make sure there's something for Svenskaren to take. They're actually going to gank mid. He's going into mid, but Lyra's right there to stir him around. So now it's damage out of Demonte. Half HP on him. Niski's running forward. Svenskaren coming around as well. They land that first shuriken. Flash over the wall. Does Niski flash for the chase? Q auto could be enough to kill him. He's going to flash for it. Oh, the Kingmaker heal comes in, but it's still going to be a lot of damage. There's the flash. The shield oh! on the They're buying enough space, and now Niski is flashless. The heals come in. He's ignited, taking some damage. Not going to die just yet. Look at another knockout in for the Rex side. Can they get the first kill? First blood comes in for Cody's son. So to has arrived as well. That's one picked up for Liquor's looking for a second as the kills are coming through for Cloud9. Side of the one already. More. Can he land a spell? Nothing's in range. No, oh, except for cooldown. <laughs> Doesn't go for the play, but still, two to one Cloud9 with first blood to Cody's son. Action packed start to this game. Only four and a half minutes in, and everybody is partying down on the red buff side of the jungle of Clutch Gaming, except. For Huni, the pike is pushing on top side. He will get a turret plate as well as push a bunch of minions into that turret. Now let's take another look at this replay here. They're chasing down Demonte. Licorice had come in and called it off, but as soon as they see the bottom lane also move up, you can see on the mini map, Licorice also starts to converge. So that's going to mean that eventually Cloud9 will have more numbers because they have everybody down on the bottom half of the map. So much damage dealt by Cody's son here trying to chase them off. Uh, but Niski's able to kite him out long enough for the arrival of the C9 duo, which completely turns the tables. They get the extra kill. All right, so this means we have a 300 gold lead to Cloud9, but Clutch still getting a decent amount of control here. Huni pulls in the crab, and Lyra grabs the top scuttle now as well. Huni, though, sadly, is still down in farm as Licorice comes back up top lane after the recall, after getting TP, and has more items and more CS. Uh, Huni will be on the back foot somewhat here as Licorice got the shot with the extra 300 gold from the kill as well. It's going to make that hard to equalize, but Tiamat not terribly far away from the pike as trades aren't continuing until bone flitting drops off. And that's some pretty good damage. That yeah. shield stops all the damage output. I mean, that's a lot of long swords there. Licorice yeah. was able to pick up off of the back. And we talked about earlier the Hexec ultimatum, so good for uh, Camille here in the 1v1 with Pike. Definitely has a huge advantage, so Huni's going to have to be very careful. And now that there's a lot of extra money on the Camille, as well as the approaching level 6. You see Niski having to play very far back right now. Is being pushed around by Demonte a bit, who has that assist to his name. Items roughly equal across those players. Huni left sitting under turret without too much difficulty. And now we have Clutch Gaming again. More pressure in this bottom lane. And, and look at the farm difference. It's 45 on the Zaya to 19 on Tarek. That is a direct comparison is the Tarek to the Zaya. And it's more than double, plus the Mountain Drake, plus the first blood Cody's son has. Clutch Gaming are by all rights slaughtering the bot lane two on two. It is not close right now. Yep, the new addition here, Cody's son, definitely faring extremely well. Son of Tarek usually going to get a little bit behind, but not this much behind in lane. Yeah. Versus the Zaya Rakan, the really aggressive looks. Also, the roam up into the jungle was while there were more minions killing off uh, their sure. opponent minions, so a lot were denied there. And that is going to be a fairly big gold sink here. And one of the reasons why the gold is still so close, even though C9 got the extra kill. Well, we can see as they pass once again by each other, the mid laner is still uh, a bit close, but Demonte is winning in farm overall. This is actually um, largely a, a several lane lead. The jungle's up in farm mid, and bot are doing quite well. It's actually really only licorice above Huni as far as laning phase leads here. You can see the gold, despite the extra kill, has now down to an only, well, it's actually back at 500 as ways go, traded back and forth, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty close here overall as a game. And uh, Clutch Gaming, I think so far, being somewhat impressive, you came into this split, you wouldn't maybe not expect them to do well against C9, but this game doing pretty well so far. Lyra now backfilling into the bottom lane as Demonte running by as well. This is a 4v2. 
there are no ults for the C9 duo. Second plate falls, third plate gonna drop now as well. And how far back they have to play, threatened by the dive. Yeah, this is a completely split map right now. Cloud9, weak side down on the bottom. Meanwhile, top side, Clutch Gaming's weak side there. Hooney's having to defend against all the looks from Licorice and Svenskaren roaming around. Big, big cash in though, on the plates on the bottom side for Clutch Gaming. Very nice power play there to push in and get some gold out of this advantage. Yeah, right now 900 gold above Sneaky. Not a completely fair direct comparison, but still factually accurate. 900 also up above the Taric, which is the one for one right now in this point in the game until Sneaky completes that. And now Licorice taking the trade against Goonie, and you can see how much damage he deals. Yes. He'll regen most of that back up, and Licorice still does come ahead in those trades. Yeah, Licorice has command of the top side. He's still about 300 gold away uh, or ahead from the kill that he got on the bottom half of the map. And as you can see, trade goes pretty close to even as the potion and passive from Pike, though, can heal Hooney back up. And just fine to full HP as Licorice pushes in, but team at wave clear, pretty easy to do, and there's not going to be too much of a difficulty using, even the, using the Q and a bit of mana. Make sure the minions all go down. Sven Scara now lurking around. Does have the controller to keep this one Let's see in the fog of war. The ping on Delira. Oh, first the fight in the bottom side. Trading a couple ultimates down. And vulnerability come in for the C9 side. And now it's a fight in the top side. Two on two. Jungle Knight's kick back on a Sven Scarin, But a lot of damage all comes in. That's going to catch Lyra one for zero. And a good flash gets away from the fear, from the depth. So the damage, the ultimate, that's the word I was looking for. Pike not going to get any kills. And a one for zero cloud down to the top side. Looks really good there. Yep, both teams playing off their strengths here. C9 trying to focus on the top side. They do get the 2v2 advantage. Niski roams up there, but it's too late. And that gives DeMonte an opening to go for Clutch Gaming's advantageous side of the map. Again, passing on bottom. This will be the turret. First turret kill going to go over to Clutch Gaming, as well as every single plate. Plate number four and a 10-minute first turret. This bot lane is working wonders. Cody's son, the roster changed this split and maybe Clutch turned their fates around with this player upgrade. Here's another look at that. I'm, as the camera was up there, I was going to see if Ben Scarin was going to get a ping on Lyra from the passive with Rek'Sai. He immediately goes in, gets the knockup, stopping him halfway through as the Hextech ultimatum came from Licorice, and he's able to flash out of Huni's ultimate, but you can't flash Rek'Sai's ultimate. Nope. Big difference there. Pike ultimate gets flashed, no execution. Rek'Sai ultimate gets the kill under tower. Yeah, death from below, not able to land right there. X did ma not mark that spot. And you can see this game now. Cloud9, though, want to point out that because of that turret being killed by Clutch, Cloud9 down in gold, Clutch winning through the bottom lane we're substantially. Gonna... Reaver done, now a fight in this top river. Yeah, we're going to have a fight over this rift jail. C9 have one less person, though. Sneaky cannot join. There is no Sona here, so it should be a Clutch gaming objective. It's theirs, absolutely. There's the eye, going to be picked up, and they've still got three minutes to work with before plates drop. A charge is pretty much always two plates outright. It deals true damage. You might as well summon it early, and we'll see what they can do. 800 gold up, plus an expected 320 or more if they can push through. As they've got three to four members top side right now, only Silas holding mid, recalling. And yes, an early summon, but they found a fight! Vulcan is gonna drop down right away. The fight continues now. They find that first stun, kicked over the wall. Not gonna find that kill in Licorice just yet, not rooted in place either. So that's gonna find some damage towards Huni. Goes for the ult, gets some decent damage there, blasts over the wall, but he's not invisible. And the damage is gonna come through, plus the extra kill for Niski. It is three, sorry, two kills uh, picked up right now as Vulcan's already respawn, making that a third overall. This is an absolute crush of a team fight. C9 side. Yep, C9 rotating everybody up there, and Sven Scarin on this wreck side is absolutely on a tear. Finds the extra kill on Dahuni, allowing now Sneaky and Zazel to get some turret plates up themselves. And of course, the Rift Herald did absolutely nothing, was killed out. One turret plate gone. The stun comes in, and got to push back Cody some, but not going to find any more extra gold off that structure. But what a good fight. Puts C9 back a thousand gold ahead and stops everything that was gained by that Rift Herald take. All right, other things to watch out for, too. This Akali starting to become very threatening. Niski got two kills in the last fight. Now has 150 gold bounty on his head. Has finished the Hextech Gunblade. Very big spike for this champion. Well, coming up, first person view of Licorice. And our next replay there. We'll see when that comes through. And here we go, Licorice in this fight. Sitting in the fog, waiting to kill off Vulcan. Knows he's in there, and then, bam, E in the knockup. Plenty damage there. That first kill is really, really easy. Getting pulled into Fog of War that makes it a bit more difficult. He's got to figure out what he wants to outplay. That kick, I think, kind of saves him a bit. He's out of range of everything. Yeah, I like the immediate pings, too, from C9. In this 
pro view, you can see all the communication going on. He keeps his eye down there onto the kill, and they're able to finish off the Rift Herald next. Yeah, it's finished the first half. Like, he did that, and then he got kicked out, and it's like, okay, I'm out of range. <laughs> I guess, uh, guess I'm done. Just watching now. Yeah. All right, let's see if Lyra can find anything here in the mid lane. It's very difficult on Akali unless Nisky goes very, very aggressive. So he's going to actually walk up through a whole bunch of wards to try and lend some more support to their duo. And I think that is where Clutch Gaming should continue to pressure. Cody Sun is their big way to win this game. This Zaya is so far ahead with all the turret plates that he has been able to mine. He is going to build very nicely into a full crit build and be the damage output they need. Yeah. This feels very much, especially as the gold is pushing towards C9's side, Licorice stealing away this red buff as well. This is a little bit Cody Sun versus the world. Uh, the difficulty being that there is no great frontline tank for the squad. Uh, there's a lot of engage, which is cool. You've got um, Silas able to steal some stuff away. Stealing Sona would be pretty magical. Uh, Rakan's, of course, great about that, but it's really the only guy with a substantial lead is Cody Sun. So we'll see if he can do it. He can put the team on his back. It's still a pretty close game, but it just, it just, just feels skewed in that way. C9 gonna grab this Mountain Drake, so they're gonna answer that one no problem. As minions are picked up in various spots around the map. Licorice with this red buff could pretty easily fight Huni, but not gonna go for the turret damage or fighting him under turret when the CC is available. Yeah, C9 quickly approaching their team five phase here. With the Sona Taric, that is what you want to do. Use these support ultimates for a grouped up fight. So much protection is available with the Taric and then the AoE ultimate from Sona uh, to lock down those priority targets. As you mentioned, there are not very many tanky members on Clutch. So if someone gets caught in a Sona ultimate, or even just a knock-up from Rek'Sai to hold them in place long enough, yeah. uh, it will be very, very short-lived. Yeah. And one thing I want to just sort of reiterate quickly when I talked about Cody Sun versus the world. Yes, this game is very close in gold. It's 100 apart. But last I checked, which is 12 seconds ago, every single member on C9 has more gold than their opposite member, except Sneaky versus Cody Sun. So it is sort of like a full-court press for C9's well, side with Cody. Yes, I know like the, the laning phase makes that awkward. It's still in a bot lane, but the other four all have more gold. Including top jungle mid, which were not influenced by the Sona Terrish lane. All right. Yep. It is a Klepto uh, Sona Stealth East uh, bottom side, but we'll see how they fare when they do start to make use of those big ultimates. Niski again, the Akali here with the Gum Blade, looking for Cody Sun. That is his main target for these fights. And Akali very adept at weaving past a lot of different members to try and get that priority damage. And as they stack up and as that Archangels moves closer and closer to completion, the mana right now, 268 of 750. It's going to be a while till Seraphs is done for Sneaky. It's going to be a fairly long road up to the next power spike. But that's one thing to watch for when it eventually does come through. Cody Sun going actually for a very high AD build. I actually this one a lot. S3 for into IE. Oh, they got a fight here in the top side, though. This is a nice knockup. Big damage on Lyra. Ooh. That shield comes in to save a lot of space, and a good kick keeps him safe as Lyra is able to walk away. But now there might be a re-engage. No one goes over the wall. Ooh, they find a nice engage right there. That's Liquor's locking one down, and Lyra is all the damage on Nahuni through one ult, and the Terracle keeps the rest of the squad safe. As you mentioned, Health bar's not high on clutch. One lockdown spell enough to kill the top laner. Yeah, C9 gaining early advantage in this team fight by Sven Scarin getting the huge chunk down onto Lyra, forcing them into a defensive uh, battle pattern, and then being able to find that extra kill off of the teleports when clutch gaming were already at a losing health bar scenario. Uh, they decide to re-engage, and that is going to be Cloud9 now dispersing to farm the side lanes. Really nice stuff by them. Once again, puts the gold lead in their favor by 1,300 as top's going to be pushed in. The Trinity Force about halfway done here for Licorice, and golden inventory means he's almost done with it. Very little to go now for that one. Maybe 300 gold, and he's done. So two waves or that turret, and he's got it. Akali pushing in the bottom lane as well. All these lanes are doing nicely. Cloud9 sizably now feeling comfortable in this mid game. Had a fairly close match against FlyQuest yesterday, but did come away with, I would say, Mostly a great mid game that transitioned well for them. Looking at a sort of a similar look here in Clutch and the fact that it's not that they're running over them from start to finish, it's that they get some control and then it starts to turn over. And speaking of that control, one of the biggest things about Zona Taric bottom lanes is that you get two quest upgrades for placing more wards. They have access to so many more wards now. Sneaky and Zazel both can put out 
uh, a lot of vision for themselves. So with this advantage... Oh, just turned away. That could have been really close. Azel nearly knocked up there by Rakan. 3v2 could have been enough, but it wasn't quite there. They walk away, fighting for ward control. And Lyra going to knock on that control ward, plus Cody Sun pushing into the mid lane. This Zaya can do a lot of Go damage. Rakan with Demolish, some damage here. They can stop the TP. If they hit with Demolish, they can stop the TP. They're going to let him come down. They get the kill on Tarek. And now it's Blink Rush in front of the team. But they're going to maybe find a big root. Nisky showing up. He's trying to take down Cody Sun by himself. Jumps right back in the solo kill in the bot lane. And the rest of the squad is already here. Cloud9 now running in for more kills. A Sun and a Vulcan trying to jump away. Is that Rakan? But he's slowed yet again. Rex has shown up now as well, trying to scatter, trying to get back to their base. A flash knockup is the setup they wanted. A kick only buys a little bit of space. They will still go down. It's four to one. A gigantic team fight for C9. Yep. That's going to be a big, big game changer for C9. They have full control of the map. The biggest thing that Clutch have to be thankful for is that it's not 20 minutes and there's no Baron available for Cloud9 to take after that fight. They could have stopped this teleport. Demolish was ready. The turret was at one third. All right, take a look. They go for the dive and they do kill off Zazel, taking down the Tarek, but they use so much in it and they leave Cody Sun here with tower aggro on a tower that had 10 HP left on yeah. him, open to the rest of Cloud9, immediately diving and killing off their biggest member. You said it was Cody Sun versus the world, the one with all of the money on the team. Yep. Uh, the Zaya taken out, separated. And because of that dive, Cloud9 can get to chase them down, pick up the extra kills, grab, grab this dragon, and actually prepare for that Baron upon arrival. They have the double sight stones basically for the extra wards, and they could just set up and force Clutch Gaming to walk into them. It's so dangerous now. And that Baron is spawning in 15 seconds, an ocean trick to keep them topped off. In case you needed even more help than a Sona Terra could give, another slow's gonna be found. Cody Sun is just gone, deleted by the engage, and what a timer for that as Baron is now spawned. Tough to be an ADK with no flash there, with Camille and Akali looking for your head. Yeah. Cloud9 find it, they get the extra kill. They're gonna run straight down mid lane, and this game is wide open. This game is closing quickly on the clutch gaming side. That door is wide open for C9 to run through it as they knock down that mid lane turret, and, and they stick around for the inhibit at least a little bit. They're gonna knock down these minions, and they are gonna back off, but Cody Sun spawning in four seconds, and this time he will have ult available for the self peel. Means maybe Cena doesn't look for Baron right away. Maybe they get vision and a reset afterwards. We'll see what they go for here. 2035 into the game. C9 sizably ahead over 4,000. Cloud9 did extremely well in spring split. Went to Korea in the offseason. Were very uh, public about their boot camp and uh, training over in Korea. Really focused, and it seems to have paid off. They've Picked up right where they left off from last season. Extremely quick games here. Winning a lot of these mid-game team fights. Let's see if they can finish it out. Because 21 minutes into the game, all they have to do is reset and get back out to this barren area. Clutch are trying to be the first ones there to yeah. have some vision for themselves to allow the possibility of some counterplay. You mentioned Rakan engage, Pike engage. These are their tools to try and find a surprise. Nice scouting right there by C9. IE is done for Cody's son, so this might be the one moment they look for. They get the separation on a one, looking for the kill on Demonte. Pops his own his hourglass, now looking for the re-engage, but they're invulnerable as CG tries to come in. There comes that first kill. Demonte is gone already, and it's 5v4 as C9 runs for more kills. Looking over the wall. There's the knockup on Tuhuni. Looking for the kill. They might just find him. He tries to run away, finds the sun, and a blast cone gives him even more safety. And now Cody's son is the front runner. He's the one who might be found out here. A turret to put themselves a little bit of space. Look for the crescendo, look for the stun, I gotta find that just yet. The feathers come back, they don't find the stun, but they will find that kill as Vulcan drops down. That's one trade of back though, Cody Sun does find some shots, oh. and death from below will not land as Cody Sun is gone, and Pike is gonna fall as well. Lyra versus the world, Baron could be in C9's eyes. Yeah, it has become a bloodbath here. Cloud9 just chasing Clutch all over the map. No area is safe. You've got towers, doesn't matter. You've got jungle creeps here, doesn't matter. Baron is alive, doesn't matter. They're gonna go for all the kills. They are getting so far ahead now. This fight right there, it's a great pick. They find Demonte and, and Licorice just starts it right off. All right, take another look here. Big chunk on the top side, using Tarek ultimate offensively. I like this look. 
they just pop it early and know that they can go get a huge health lead at the start of the team fight. They fully engage on Demonte. Even though it is Silas, you've got the Terra community, so they just chase Clutch Gaming off. And again, they split and they segment this team fight. Clutch have to scatter here. Clutch have not had a single team fight where they've been able to set up on their terms with their engage. It has been Cloud9 dictating the pace of this game, of these team fights, and of the end as well. Huni tries to get over the wall there, uh, but Niski walking out of range means you don't teleport if you don't hit it. Yep. And he almost hit Sneaky, but Sneaky turns around. Almost got him in the edge of that one. But now Spiky Ninja is once again inside the pit and the vulnerability. Well, time to keep Niski safe. And Clutch just cannot buy that kill. They force the ults out for the healing coming back in. C9 back to pretty much full HP. Yeah, those are two pretty big ultimates. With no Akali ultimate, the full 100% to zero threat on Cody's son is greatly reduced. And that is also the Terra ultimate. Okay, so this is force. Clutch Gaming's chance. Trying to force the fight without Terra ultimate. Can they get their way in? Niski now looking for the flank. Huni, I have HP. Oh, it's a four man crescendo. The stun bolt not there just yet, but the feathers fly. They find a bit of damage and a stolen crescendo does a little bit now as well to push them back. Niski low on health. Licorice does find that first kill though. Lyra isolated from the squad. Couldn't flash away and C9 still come away with the kill. Hey, Sneaky comes up with a big flash crescendo. Now the. Uh, doorway towards mid lane is actually open. They're splitting. Half of them going back to the Baron, though. Looks like just Licorice and Sneaky trying to take out that tower. And you know, they're making sure that Baron's not being snuck, and then if there's any recalls, maybe they can stop them if they're doing it. Obviously, Huni is sitting around. He might be the one to try to turn this one. There's always that small possibility something goes well for him, but it's all in fog of war. Looking for the Q, looking to pull someone around, but now he's going to run away. Licorice is here, finds the stun, but also slowed. Gonna stay alive, but he's gonna somehow steal this. Vulcan coming around, Demonte here as well. This is a tough fight, but one that Clutch needs to find a way to win. A Kalio stolen now by the Silas. Goes in for a bit of an engage. That's big damage for Demonte. Almost knocks down Sneak, but the shields are just too much. And now it's time for Baron. The kills are still coming through for C9. All of the Terrick falls. That fight's gonna land. And Cloud9 come away two for one with the Baron on top of it. Yep, and they're gonna continue looking for those ghost licorice goes in. They're gonna find Vulcan a little bit. Oh, over the top goes the Rek'Sai. And now where can they even run that out? The turret's already gone. Look at the next stun, a nice flash in for Licorice. Grando, <laughs> uh, not as amazing, but it's gonna be fine. It's still C9 so far ahead. Niski once again spots Lyra, finds that first slow, looks for round two as soon as he can, but a ward hop keeps him safe. Well, it's gonna stop at four to 20 in kills, but that inhibitor is gonna drop. Yeah, it's not gonna stop at the kills anymore. Baron buff is on, so there should be some turret destruction here. Got now actually looking like a reset. A lot of gold gains uh, in the last frantic moments that we've had. Yeah, haven't had a reset in quite a while, so it is going to be back to base to purchase, then pushing with the Baron buff. Here's another look at how they started out. Remember, there was just a fight before this where they killed off Lyra. So C9 knows there's no jungler. That's why they're forcing so hard on this Baron. And Clutch Gaming know that this is their chance. 4v5 with Baron damage going, two members left in the pit. Maybe they can create something with the chaos. They try and converge, but Sneaky, with all the shields, the barrier coming through, too much protection and not enough focus from Clutch Gaming to be able to pick up that kill. So C9 get the Baron, they get the reset. They are not only rich, but also empowered to push. Yes, they are. Still two minutes on this one second. Mountain Drake was picked up during the replay. They stopped the siege and took up the neutrals instead. And they got all kinds of time to take a lot over. Now look for the hard engage. They're gonna get that kill. Nice pick up there. That's good by Vulcan. And a nice kickback. Oh no, not gonna find that one. Licorice actually gonna stay alive. He's gonna be okay on this. Very good look here from Clutch Gaming. Vulcan knows that they have very little chance if they let the Baron team push up to the towers and play it slow. So he goes very fast, flashes in with the Rakan. They get the kill onto Sneaky, and that might buy them some time in this game. I'm not sure it falls, and it's pretty easy for Call to walk backwards, so. One kill is nice, but it wasn't a very big shutdown. Sneaky was mostly assist heavy, so pretty bare bones one there. Yeah, it does buy you time though. While he's in the death chamber, the gas is off from Cloud9. They're not pressing ahead on inhibitor turrets. And those are the things you have to look for. You know, you're so heavily behind in this game. It's always nice for me to see teams in that position looking for the killer instinct, looking for yes. those offensive plays to try and fight their ways out of it rather than just sitting back and letting it happen. No, I totally agree. You think about what are the odds that Clutch win this game? It's, you know, nine to one or something. So you should take an 11% play. That's already better than your odds of winning the game. So anything with those odds is actually a better chance to win. This is, of course, a pretty foregone formality to get that kill on Sona. That was a nice one. 
But still, 40 seconds left to Siege here for C9. They've got a lot of window. At least enough window to knock that inhibitor if they want it. They're playing a little bit slowly here, but they have Sona back. Mid cleared, now walking towards the bottom lane to join up with Licorice's Camille. And this should be second turret bot lane gone. Yeah, Licorice Camille, by the way, is 6 0 12, 700 gold bounty with GA active on him. Yeah. Three item power spike. This is an extremely scary level 16 all in. Uh, that is basically just going to pick a target. It should either be Cody's son um, or Cody's son and finish that <laughs> one off. <laughs> Uh, Demonte without Zonius is an okay target, but I agree, Cody is the optimal one here. Looking at some wave, not gonna happen just yet. There's the stun, there's the dive in towards Demonte, it is indeed. A lot of damage coming across, there's the invulnerability, and Woo. two kills picked up very quickly. Hooney cannot get away either, make it already three. Now down for another one, they're gonna find number four. Lyra gonna drop without a casualty. C9 gonna knock down the bottom inhibitor turret. The inhib will follow, and the Nexus is in their eyes right afterwards. Cloud9 will be undefeated after week one of the LCS, coming back in summer in style. A lot of great games out of Licorice here. The whole squad looking pretty solid, picking up where they left off. A top team in the LCS, one of the Titans here, expecting them to go to Worlds, and they still look on form. C920, padding the stats, knocking down the Nexus. Action back game. We were excited in Champion Select for the Pike Camille matchup. Yep. They did not disappoint. The junglers both went up there very early. Cloud9 got the kills with a guaranteed Rek'Sai ultimate, and they were able to use that uh, for a lot of roams from Licorice. But I have to say, Sonoteric also still very strong, still working out very well in the mid game. Yep. Those ultimates giving you a lot of power in team fights, and every time they brought them together. Clutch Gaming had to separate in these team fights. And once you scatter versus that team, yep. you're just in the perfect opportunity for champions like Camille, like Akali, to pick you off. You know, it's yep. a really good composition actually uh, coming all together where you can force a break like that. Yeah, I thought C9 was very, very good. Honestly, to me, this sort of result is expected when they were one of the top teams at the end of the spring split. They seem to have not dropped a beat. They are still incredible. The interesting story to me is actually talking about Clutch. With the roster change, what kind of team are they now? Are they a playoff team? Are they making good upgrades? I was still impressed by Cody's son. Their bottom lane was substantially ahead. Their very early game plans was good, right? They stole the blue buff away. They took, you know, 40% of Svenskeren's jungle out. Like, that was a really, really good start. It collapsed when the, when the first sort of, like, mid lane into bottom jungle collapse happened. That started giving gold away. Uh, but, but the bot lane, the early jungle, those were really solid. Those were, those were moments of strength for Clutch, but it really fell apart in team fights. That's where it felt like they dropped the ball and seen and outplayed them. Would be cool to see if they can clean that up. We've got, of course, eight more weeks of Clutch gaming in the regular season. We'll see if they can make playoffs there. But for more on that victory, we're going to be standing by with Cloud9's Rogue Assassin. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by Cloud9's Niski after their win over Clutch Gaming. Niski, it looked like you had so much fun this weekend, stealing alts on Silas, cutting up your opponents on Akali. How's it feel to be back on the LCS stage? Um, it feels great, because the meta right now is really fun, and I feel like we're enjoying the game way more than before, at least for me, because I'm playing OP champions. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it feels good to be back. That's awesome to hear. Uh, just a quick two question for you. Here's the final one. Looking at, at coming into this weekend, what did you guys kind of have set out to accomplish? Even with the 2-0, that feels good, but did you check all the boxes? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're trying to play more around limits, and I think we can see that uh, today against Clutch, we went in like without any hesitation. And yeah, that's what makes the difference, I think, against other teams. Right on, Niski. Thank you so much. Best of luck in the rest of the season. Congrats on the win. We're going to throw it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk to break that down. Thank you very much, Riv. With that victory for Cloud9, we can say goodbye to the uh, dream of the 10-way tie as they move to 2-0. and And for Clutch, it will be an 0-2 start to their summer split. Crumbs, I'm coming directly to you because in Countdown, you prescribed easier to execute compositions for our Clutch gaming roster. We've got Champ Select on the screen. How do you feel about it? Well, much like modern medicine, they ignored what the doctor prescribed. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do this again? You're doing this to yourself. You're hurting yourself. Pike, Silas, Lee Sin, this is really difficult to pull off. I don't know why Clutch Gaming did this. I think that they probably 
have success with it on, on scrims, right? People are a little bit looser. You're guaranteed to get a lot more kills with these picks, but on the LCS stage, when you're gonna be playing against teams that know what you're looking to do, it just doesn't work. And a lot of missed skill shots, well, a lot. I, I think like, I understand conceptually what it is. This is a G2 draft. Like, right. It's super good for what they're playing into. You have Silas, who can steal all these incredible ultimates. He's so good with, you know, almost every single one there. Mm -hmm. You have the Pike to assassinate someone before the, the Taric ultimate drops on top of them. And then you team fight from there with Zyra Khan, who have great engage as well. They're one of the best ball lanes in the meta. Right. It all makes sense, but Crumbs is saying, you're not G2. Right. <laughs> you can't just pick a G2 draft and you're make clutch. like top work. Yeah, you're clutch. And so I, I absolutely agree. Like I thought both teams' drafts were really intelligent, and I was really excited to see how this back and forth of team fight should get played out. But we didn't really get to team fight. Yeah, not necessarily. But I, I do want to. I want to dive further down the hole though of, of Cloud9's response to this because I thought it was very interesting, as you mentioned, Mark, how they responded to seeing the type of uh, uh, Pike in the top lane. I mean, the Camille was a, a, such a great counter pick. You are have so much lockdown for the Pike that basically, if he is going to execute one of the people in the Sonatera comp, you're basically trading back because once he goes in, he's locked in. And I thought that was going to lead to some really cool back and forth team fights. But from the minute from minute three, I guess, into the game, it was so skirmish heavy in C9's favor. Yeah, it's really hard for Pike to actually live up to Camille, considering he's so squishy, does not get to build any HP. The second she jumps onto him, mid to late game, a stun, hook, auto, you're dead. Yeah. You don't even need to use ult. Licorice roaming from the top side there to join that uh, fight all the way down in the red side jungle very early on. It, it ended up netting him a fair number of long swords, as the casters mentioned, yeah. positioned him quite well uh, in the top lane. But but uh, another result of that uh, bot lane fight was uh, quite a large advantage for the clutch gaming bot lane. And as Freak mentioned, he is still uh, to a degree impressed by Cody in his first two outings. Uh, seems to be a serviceable uh, ADC, but as you guys mentioned, we never get to the stage where he's then able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, push his team towards yeah. victory and actually carry out. But then it's also, you're up against Sonateric, bottom lane. If you don't get ahead as the AD kit, you just really messed up. Mm -hmm. So I kind of expect anybody to, that goes up against the bottom lane of Sonateric with a regular matchup to be in a position to get a CSC, to get a goalie, because the other team just is trying not to die. They're not trying to win the lane. They're really just trying to survive. So that does present the opportunity for somebody to get ahead. And that's just Cody doing his job. I wouldn't say he's going above and beyond being expected. I would say he did a little bit better than expected. Like they had a pretty substantial bleed already over the Sonateric is around 20 CS when they had to go, you know, save their mid and jungle who were getting killed on their own side. Right. Up all bot priority while you do that, they still converted into a fair number of turret plates. Then they rotated top and they're grabbing Rift Herald. Like, I thought the play, not just Cody's particular play, but the whole team's play around Cody was good. And I, I think, you know, if you're having a more stable top side of the map, if you're not playing in the Sonatera come late game, like, this could have been a good setup for a Cody carry game. Right, Clutch's bot lane garnering a nice little lead in the early game. C9's bot lane just trying to hold on. But that means that for Cloud9, the answer has to come in the top lane. And it did exactly that. The skirmishing power of Camille Rek'Sai is just so filthy because they both have abilities that actually let you dodge out of damage, both ultimates make it really difficult to fight, and then they just got to team up and delete members of Clutch Gaming here. Huni, thinking that he's just hoping to get Licorice low enough for the execute, but Lyra said, Licorice, get out of here, man. We're trying to get you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what it breaks down to at the end of the day. We can talk about all these other things, but they got out skirmished every single time a fight happened. Their ultimates are getting flashed out of. They're burning their flashes, still getting Rek'Sai ultimate. They're kicking the, the one guy you're on top of away so he can live. It's, it was it was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, peculiar game because while the gold was still close following a lot of these replays, it really did feel like Cloud9 was in control once we crested that 15-minute mark. I would say in large part, the game-deciding replay here at 18 minutes into the game, a four-for-one in favor of Cloud9 in mid lane mark. You see some of what you're talking about with the Pike's potential to zero somebody out in a fight, not even having to use his ultimate there. But again, the response from Licorice's uh, Camille and in being able to lock him down and make sure that no resets, no no Pike really takes off in this game. Yeah, I would love to see these kinds of team fights when one of the team doesn't already have eight more kills than their opponent, yep. in which I don't think that ne they need to give all those up. So like that was one of those cool moments where you hopefully could have seen how these team cons interact, but because they're so far ahead, <laughs> the Akali just shows up and obliterates Zaya. They also burn three ults for the Taric. So the second you do that, you're not winning any other fight right away. You got to go full retreat.
street. So yeah. they were doomed once they got Tarek. It was all about getting out. A tough 0-2 week uh, for Clutch Gaming, but I do want to talk about Cloud9. Uh, you know, one of our top three teams from Spring Split. They're starting hot here with a 2-0. I think, uh, by all accounts, that was a, an expected start. Uh, but this was a squad that, as we mentioned, going into playoffs of spring, the expectation was they might actually be the strongest team, and they did get reverse swept to miss the finals. And so I'm certain that this squad is coming back, looking to make a statement in summer that they can actually be the top team here domestically. I don't, as a C9 fan, this is as good of a weekend as you could have hoped for. You had a bit of a tough battle against a respectable playoff opponent, but you were able to clean it up and still win pretty decisively. And then here against someone who didn't make playoffs last split, you crush them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, week one, you just want to see good draft and everybody being on the same page. Win or lose, whatever. It's just about being on par with your teammates, making the same calls every single time, whether it's the right call or the bad call. That's what we got. Exactly that out of Cloud9. When we return, it's FlyQuest versus Golden Guardians. If either squad has your support, make sure to pick up your team pass in client today. Not only will you be directly supporting your team, but you'll get Nikon Ward and Dragon Slayer Brom Chroma, all in the team's colors. We'll see you here for game two after the break. And now it's a fight in the top side. Two on two. Jungle Knight's kicked back on his Ben Scarin, but a lot of damage all comes in. Now only Silas holding mid, recalling, and yes, an early summon, but they found a fight! I'm commenting, I'm commenting. Lino flash, Lino flash. E3, three, two. Flash nice. Silas flash. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm me. Okay, that's nice. it, that's it. Vulcan drops down. That's one trade of back, though. Cody Sun does find some shots. Oh. And death from below will not land as Cody Sun is gone. And Pike is going to fall as well. Yeah. Zaya's hitting us, but we're OK. We're OK. Silas, 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 Silas. Silas dead. Coming. I'm dead here, but you guys win. Silas, Silas, Silas. Can you finish? There's a stun. There's a dive in towards Demonte. It is indeed. A lot of damage coming across. There's invulnerability. And two kills picked up very quickly. Hooney cannot get away either. Make it already three. Congrats, Kim. You got your own car with your own insurance. No more driving that old hand-me-down. Did you trade it in? My parents handed it down to my little brother. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Surprise! Surprise! No. Not beige Betty. You, you, got, you guys can't do this to me, seriously? My car is like a rite of passage. How do you expect me to drive this? Just turn the key and yeah, it's just uh, Some of this. It's automatic, dual cup holders. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. State Farm.